Hello everyone, my name is Dr. Alexander al -Sadi. In this episode, I will be giving you my experience and a few pointers on what I did from the first day I got on the island until the last day that I left after MD4. So before I get started, I just want to give you a brief history about myself. I started MD1 at CMU in September of 2013. I just uh, matched into a university program in internal medicine. During my journey, I was very fortunate and grateful to get a 250 plus on both my step one and CK exams, as well as pass my CS on my first attempt. So for all of you that are starting an MD1, uh, I know it's a very new experience. It's very fresh. Uh, it's very anxious a little bit. I know I was very anxious my first week. I didn't know what to expect. Um, I didn't have a history of medicine in my background. I wasn't always the greatest student uh, in my undergraduate years, so I was very nervous, but also I was very motivated. Uh, and I think that kind of gave me a little more motivation that I thought, hey, I might be an underdog. Because in all honesty, all of us as Caribbean students, as international medical students, we are the underdog. So this should all be motivation for you since we are competing for residency spots with US medical students. To tell you how much of an underdog we actually are, in 2018 match, about 95% of US medical graduates uh, match into the residency of their choice. Of the same statistics for IMGs, only 56% matched into a residency this year, which is actually a little bit of a bump. It was 53% the year before. So it is going up. If you look to all your peers, statistically, only half of your class is going to match into residency. And if that's not motivation that you really gotta put in work, then I don't know what is, because this is all of our dreams and it really comes down to what are you willing to do to achieve your dream. So the first thing I kind of wanted to jump into is what I did, right? Like I said, I was very nervous. So I didn't know how to prep for medical exams. You know, I didn't know what strategies to take. So my whole MD1 was just a bunch of trial and error which is unfortunate because I wasted a lot of time uh, and a lot of paper trying to get through what worked for me. So, you know, I tried flashcards, it didn't work. I tried typing on my computer, it didn't work either. And I kept trying different strategies and different ways to study until I found something that was the most effective for me to where I could learn the most amount of information in the least amount of time. So what worked for me was every day when I got home after I exercised and, and ate a late lunch or an early dinner, I would pick out a topic that I went over in class today that the teacher went over and I would watch a video on it. Uh, usually YouTube videos, there's tons of them on there. And I would try to find a video on the topic that I wanted to cover that day. And then after I watched the video, more of a broad uh, spectrum of what it was about, I would dive into the book and I'd read a little bit more of the details. Because something you always want to try to do is get a big picture first and then kind of go layer by layer into the details. And this process might take a little bit longer, but it will be worth it in the long run because you'll be able to retain it so much better and be able to understand it um, for, for a lot longer than just kind of memorizing facts. So after I would read and dive into it, then I would go and just do one or two questions. My next tip for you guys that I recommend doing for MD1 through MD4 is starting questions early and you're not doing questions to get them right. So you will probably get most of them wrong. You're doing questions to be exposed to USMLE style questions, right? Because half of the exam is understanding what concepts are and the knowledge behind it. The other half is being able to have time management, to having a good strategy so you have enough time to complete all of your questions and go back to ones that you maybe thought you were iffy on. So getting just one question out of the way for each subject per night it is okay in the beginning. So for MD1 through MD4, what I recommend you trying at least is if you're an MD1, just do one question per subject per night. You know, three questions per night. If you're an MD2, bump it up to two questions per subject per night. MD3, three questions, and MD4, four questions. So by the time you're done with MD4, I mean, you've banged out at up to 2,000 questions if you did this, you know, four or five times a week and you are very aware of how questions present different cases, right? Who cares if you didn't get them right, right? As long as you're aware of how they're presented, now you can work on your knowledge, you know, through these four uh, MD classes, 
and you'll really be able to extract what the question is asking um, when it comes down to taking your exam. At the end of your studies until step one, you have probably gone over all of medicine maybe three to eight times depending on how effective you are, right? Through MD1 to MD4, you will go through all of medicine one time. Uh, in a review program after, another time, maybe another before you take your exam, maybe a few more, right? So it makes no sense to me, and it shouldn't to you either, that you should just cram and cram and memorize all the information presented to you uh, during your MD1 semester. It doesn't make any sense. You just need to take your time on each subject. Try to understand as much as possible because the more you understand all the information presented to you from MD1 to MD4, the easier it will be when you have to understand a little bit more and a little faster during your prep period for step one, right? Because you do not have two years to understand all of medicine after your MD4. You have about six months, right? So trying to take your time and understand every concept that's presented to you will really do you benefit in the long run. Uh, not only for your step one exam, but for your CK, your CS, your step three, just in general forever. This island time is the most important time of your medical career. So to give you an example or proof you know, of my success and how I did it, it all started on the island. Right? I had that mentality that I wanted to do well on the island. And I had no idea what that was gonna set up for me in the future. I knew that if I did well on the island, I could potentially do well on step one. I didn't know that I would be way ahead of a lot of students during my review course. You know, I didn't know that since I did so well on step one, I didn't have to study nearly half as hard for CK because a lot of the information was implemented, right? I didn't know that all my differentials and all the different stuff I learned, I used on my CS exam, which why I only had to study for five days on my CS exam. So I didn't know what the island meant to my whole education experience until I sit in this chair today. So I hope that you take my advice and you start taking advantage of that island time uh, because it will be the most important. So now for the island, I just wanna give you a typical day for me from literally MD1 to all the way to MD4. This was my day six days a week, right? Except for my one day that I had off, which I always recommend. You know, we get off of school at three, right? And then I would go home, I would always exercise. I think it's very important. I would have a nice hearty meal, right? Maybe drink some coffee or espresso. Um, and then I would pick my topics that I wanted to go over that day. I'd usually pick about one from each subject um, that we went over and I would watch a video. And then I would dive into the book and read about that topic. And then I would try to do one question just to get a familiar uh, idea of how they're presented. So by the end of the day, I would usually study about four hours. So, you know, I'd start out at about 4.35 p.m. I would take about 30 minute break around seven and I would go until about 11, 10.30, 11. Um, and I always got into bed, you know, at 11.30, I'm in bed. By midnight, I am out because we have to get sleep, right? If we don't get sleep in the morning, we're just staring off onto the clouds. We're not thinking, you know, we're on social media stuff and you really can't use uh, that active learning that you should be using in the classroom, right? When the teacher is talking, I'm reiterating everything that he or she is saying to see if I really understand that because that's eight whole hours that you are studying, right? Just because you're sitting in a chair does not mean that you are not actively learning. So when I was putting in this work and I was putting in the four to five hours a day, I was actively learning in classroom, when did I really know that it was paying off was the first midterms that I had. And every midterm after that, I saw it as well. As when I'm looking around and then two days before midterms, everybody's cramming. Everyone's trying to pile in information into their heads so they can just you know, vomit it out on the exam and forget it all over again. And I did not do that. You know, This is where my process, my slow but thorough process every day was the proof I had. And the moment I had that proof when I saw the results on my midterm is when I knew what I was doing was right and when I knew what I was doing was effective and I really hope you at least try to do something similar or uh, something similar to what I did and see the proof for yourself because uh, that's the only way that you're really going to know.
So at the end of your day, what I recommend you doing is kind of recap on the four or five hours that you put in. Just take about 30 minutes at the end of the night. I know you'll be tired, but this will really, you know, kind of let you know what you learned that day. Just ask yourself, you know, what did I learn? Anything new that I came up with today that I didn't know prior to today? Thank you everyone for watching. If you like the video, please subscribe below and stay tuned for the next part of my series, which I'll be talking about how to transition from the island um, to the United States for your dedicated study time and your review program.